Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kiran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. And we'll start off with our first story of the day. Communities in Chiang Mai have been locked down until November 24th as COVID infections surge. 15 communities in the municipal area of Chiang Mai province were locked down yesterday until November 24th by the provincial governor as COVID-19 infections continue to spread. Everyone living in the communities is being required to take COVID-19 tests and receive vaccine shots, while employers in the area were told to bring their foreign migrant workers for COVID-19 tests and vaccinations. People living in other areas of the province have been advised to avoid the 15 communities while those living there were asked not to travel outside unless it was absolutely necessary. The 15 communities placed under lockdown have been classified as red zones in Chiang Mai. Business activities in the red zones also have these restrictions applied. Convenience stores, markets, beauty salons, spas and tattoo shops can continue business as usual but until only 10pm. Steam services, flea markets and parties are prohibited. Air conditioned eateries must limit their customers to 50% of their seating capacity or 75% if there is no air conditioning. They must close at 10pm and serving alcohol drinks is not allowed and Violators will be liable to a fine of not exceeding 20,000 baht. According to the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, 391 new COVID-19 cases were recorded yesterday. There are currently about 30 clusters in the province, according to the Provincial Health Office. Now, that's just some quick information about Chiang Mai and the general area. Of course, they just reopened to international tourism on November 1. They've had, I think, maybe one flight of Koreans that had just landed on, I think it was around November 5th. So not a great start for the province. They have been struggling with COVID all throughout October and now into November. Hopefully they can get things under control because this will desperately affect business there and deter obviously domestic tourism, which is something which they rely on greatly too, especially over the last couple of years. So hopefully things can get better there a lot quicker for the people of Chiang Mai. And moving along, speedier testing for arrivals likely. The Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration has yet to decide if antigen test kits or ATKs will replace the PCR test for fully vaccinated international travelers to allow them to travel straight to the destination. The use of ATKs to screen visitors from 63 countries is being proposed to shorten queues as higher numbers of arrivals are expected ahead of the next phase of reopening next month. Currently, fully vaccinated travelers are required to have an RT-PCR test upon arrival and stay in a hotel overnight for the test results, which generally takes 6 to 8 hours to process. Rapid screening was said to be among issues related to the forthcoming Quarantine Free Tourism Scheme, or Test and Go, brought to the attention of the CCSA meeting chaired by the Prime Minister Prayut Chanacha last Friday. The CCS spokesman said the issue is being considered by authorities as he went on to report the outcome of the reopening after almost two weeks. He said the number of inbound tourists infected with the virus was low at 0.35%. Of 34,978 visitors, only 41 were infected with the virus. The top three arrivals were from the US with 4,200, Germany 3,890 and the UK 2011. According to the CCSA Facebook, since November 1, a total of 147,503 people have registered to enter the country, with 63% approved, 14% rejected, and 23% still under consideration. Travel applications have been rejected for a number of reasons, including failing to meet hotel booking and health insurance requirements. During the first week, Thailand Pass, which replaced the COE system, also experienced hiccups, resulting in QR codes generated for visitors being un- readable by machines. The document examination process had to be done manually. During the second phase, beginning on December 1st, rapid screening has been proposed to replace the RT-PCR test for visitors at their hotels. In the third phase, slated for January 1, if all goes well, a shorter quarantine period has been proposed for non-vaccinated travellers. Public Health Minister Anutan Sharen Barakul said while he has no objection to the proposed use of ATKs to replace the RT-PCR test, it needs to wait pending discussion. He said the government is trying its best to provide convenience to visitors, but it must not be at the expense of public safety. Meanwhile, General Prayut, the Prime Minister, ordered the setting up of a tourism panel to address issues faced by international visitors following the introduction of the new Thailand Pass system, according to government spokesman. He said the task force 
would work to streamline the travel and health requirements for both Thai and foreign travellers as the country prepares to add more countries to the quarantine free list. Now that would be excellent news if it does come about. It would certainly mean that the one night quarantine and the compulsory hotel and RT-PCR test that you would have to purchase now would be done away with. And it would mean that you would arrive at the airport, you would do the quick rapid antigen test, which takes about 12 to 15 minutes to get your test result, and then you would be free to go. And I think that certainly would appeal to a lot more people. Obviously, we still have to address the close contacts, for example, on airplanes or in a taxi, and then people who do test positive and what has been done with them, especially people who are asymptomatic. I think having proper rules and regulations and understanding risk is something the Thai government need to address address very quickly. I think it's highly unfair that a person shares a taxi with somebody who may be positive for COVID and they test negative but still have to do a 14-day quarantine and I think that's completely unjustified. The bottom line is the government need to come up with ways to attract tourists to this country which is in desperate need of tourists right now and the economy is struggling with the lack of tourists here. So these kind of things they need to look at. I think personally and from stuff I've read, the Thailand Pass is going to be around for a long time. If people are thinking, well, I'll wait till January or February and they'll probably have got rid of it by then. I don't think it'll be gone by then. I think we're looking well into the middle of next year before the Thailand Pass is gotten rid of. That's my personal opinion on the matter. And I've read from other sources that they don't plan to get rid of it. This is going to be the way of travel to Thailand for quite a while. Now, it may be that you mightn't have to do a test on arrival in the future, but you still might have to do the Thailand Pass to show that you're fully vaccinated and have insurance because I think the government have for a long time wanted people to have travel insurance and this is another way for them to kind of get their way. But yes, the switch to ATK tests versus the PCR would be very positive. Also, it reduces the cost completely. ATK tests can cost as little as I think about 40 Thai baht. So there's no real expense there and it would be beneficial for the government to be able to get people out of the airport and into the hotels and starting the holiday straight away because I think as we all know people are deterred when they see that they have to do this test and still quarantine in a hotel while they're waiting for the results and it's a very bizarre and strange way to welcome tourists to the country so hopefully a little bit of common sense we we always say that common sense isn't really prevalent in the government at times but I think they are starting to understand that their that their long drawn out process is just not appealing to customers so they're trying to find ways to improve it but also have a balance with public safety as well. And next up, Thailand reopening gets off to a shaky start. Two weeks after the country reopened, the private sector is seeing signs of a tourism recovery despite lower than expected arrivals of international tourists. To help cash-strapped operators back on their feet, businesses are urging the government to lessen entry requirements, further relax COVID-19 curbs and roll out financial packages in a bid to boost the industry. Maria Sukasal, president of the Thai Hotels Association, said that there are positive signs following the November 1 reopening and hotel bookings in December and January are expected to increase. She said tour operators have put together promotional campaigns and special packages to bring in much needed cash as they clarify entry rules for test and go, sandboxes and mandatory quarantine programs. However, she echoed concerns among tourism operators about quarantine requirements which foreign guests have to comply with when returning home after holidays here. For some countries, Thailand remains a high-risk country and people hesitate to take holidays overseas if they have to quarantine upon return to their home country, she said. Miss Marisa called on the government to pursue talks with countries which send tourists here over loosening quarantine restrictions. Without mandatory quarantine at home, these tourists are most likely to consider Thailand as a destination, she added. The government need to implement more measures to help the hotel and travel sectors get back to business, she said. These include extending subsidy schemes like We Travel Together and Travel Around Thailand to boost local tourism, reducing costs through tax and utility rate cuts and providing soft loans to cash-strapped businesses. Now for a quick Pattaya roundup in relation to November 1. The chairman of the Pattaya Businesses and Tourism Association said tourism-related businesses in the resort town are coming back to life after enduring the dark days of the restrictions. Hotels have been booked solid for upcoming events including Loi Katong this weekend and an international fireworks festival which will be held next weekend. However, about 80% of arrivals in Pattaya are local tourists. Most foreigners are expats who have Thai families here and they enter through the test and go program to avoid quarantine. This group don't want to stay in quarantine. For the leisure market it is reviving gradually nothing major was added. Now about Phuket. 
arrives in Phuket are picking up. The president of the Phuket Tourism Council said the flow of foreign tourists on the resort island has doubled following the November 1 reopening. The Phuket Sandbox Scheme, which started on July 1, has welcomed about five to 600 tourists per day on average, but the province is picking up more than 1,000 visitors following the test and go scheme. Mr. Tanet said a rebound is expected as the new entry program has brought in leisure visitors from Germany, Scandinavia and the UK. Some of those entering Thailand via the Sandbox Scheme are Thai returnees. If the entry rules are loosened, foreign arrivals are likely to return in large numbers in December, he added. The province has also seen a surge in arrivals of local tourists, receiving more than 30 flights with four to 5,000 local tourists per day on average. This is not to mention the 10,000 more who arrive by land, he said. And then the Chiang Mai roundup. Domestic tourism is up in Chiang Mai. The president of the Chiang Mai Tourism Council said the province is estimated to have lost at least 70 billion baht in tourism re- revenue from impacts caused by COVID-19 pandemic and is pinning its hope on the reopening. He said while international tourist arrivals after November 1 reopening are lower than expected, overall there are encouraging signs. A chartered flight bringing in golfers from South Korea reflects travelers' confidence in health and safety protocols in the province which has made preparations for its reopening under the charming Chiang Mai scheme. With more tour groups being arranged for the upcoming high season, he expects the local tourism sector will start to turn a corner. However, in the early days of opening, the domestic market will sustain tourism businesses. And finally, in relation to air travel, air traffic in and over Thailand during the 10 days following the reopening of the country to foreign arrivals on November 1st was 25% higher than in October, averaging 990 flights a day, including overflights according to the Aeronautical Radio of Thailand Company. 2,243 international, 6,651 domestic and 1,025 overflights through Thailand airspace were recorded. AeroThai Executive Vice President said that the figures represent a good sign that traffic will further increase for the rest of the year. He said that he is optimistic that during the first two festive months of December and January, air traffic will reach about 30 to 32,000 flights per month or 1,000 to 1,100 flights a day if the COVID-19 pandemic is under control. So yes, there's a little bit of good news and all that, certainly for areas like Pattaya are seeing a boom in relation to domestic tourism, but that has always been the case down there. Chiang Mai, as we talked about in the first story, I don't think it's quite as rosy as this guy is painting it to be. And I I think the current COVID outbreak there will deter tourists from going there. I think that's a given. And Phuket, yes, Phuket is up, but not significantly up if you look at it. I mean, Phuket we're doing, now they say five to 600, but I mean, if when I was doing the daily numbers, it used to be, yeah, probably five to 700 today, up to maybe 900 at the weekend. So Phuket, to me, is not receiving that much more international tourists than it was under the Sandbox program. Now, I'm trying to figure out why that would be, probably mainly because people probably wanted to go to Bangkok at the beginning rather than come to Phuket so people now can fly direct to Bangkok so maybe they're just cutting out the whole Phuket thing which is leading to numbers not really going up. Now I do expect to see increases in numbers in Phuket. I do know that the likes of uh, TUI will be have charter flights coming in from various source markets around Europe in the end of November and then December so that'll certainly bring a lot more tourists in which is a great thing for a lot of hotels and hospitality businesses on the island of Phuket and in Panya province so that will be very very positive and I expect that to continue January and February March and up until Songkran and of course after that will be the low season again so we will certainly see a dip but yeah things are looking a bit more positive in relation to tourists coming to the country as I said in the previous article if they were to get rid of that PCR test and replace it with just a rapid antigen on arrival I think it would benefit tourism a whole lot more but I'd love to know your thoughts on the whole thing what do you think about the idea of changing it from PCR to rapid antigen do you think it's a good idea a bad idea would that entice you more and where do you see tourism going in Thailand over the next few months? Do you think it's going to increase or do you think we're just kind of see the same of what we're seeing right now in terms of trends? Moving right along, Anutan defends his fourth COVID shot. Public Health Minister Anutan Sharnavakul has said he would need a fourth shot of COVID-19 vaccine because he needs to attend a meeting abroad. The Bumjai Thai party leader, 55, received two Sinovac shots in February and later an AstraZeneca shot as the booster. But since he needs to attend a World Health Organization meeting in Switzerland later this month, he said he would need another AstraZeneca shot to qualify for entry without quarantine. Mr. Anathan told a meeting at the ministry on Thursday that Thailand could be the first country to start administering four doses. Now that more countries have reopened, we may need to rethink our vaccination strategy. 
not every country approves entry without quarantine of people who have been vaccinated with the Sinovac and Sinovac vaccines or the mixed regime recommended by the Thai government, he said. The ministry early recommended a mix and match approach to vaccinations based on local research. Under it, Sinovac was picked as the first shot and AstraZeneca as the second. Another formula adopted later was AstraZeneca Pfizer. Mr. Anatan cited himself as an example of people who might have trouble traveling abroad, saying he would need the fourth shot because he needed to attend a meeting in Switzerland. I need a pair of the vaccines they accept. Since they don't approve Sinovac, I have to get another AstraZeneca shot, he said. However, Swiss entry rules show Sinovac is one of the vaccines the country approves. The minister's comments led to speculation that he might be admitting for the first time the Chinese-made vaccine might be inferior. Mr. Anatan clarified the next day that this was not the case. The fact that he needed another shot was due to different standards adopted by countries. All vaccines save lives and all vaccinated people don't have critical symptoms or die when they contract the virus, he said. He added that people who need to go abroad are those who get Sinovac or Sinovarm shots earlier can register to get mRNA vaccines. Nobody wanted to get too many shots, he said. Too much antibody is not good, except for those who, like me, have to go abroad. I really don't know where to comment on this. Firstly, Sinovac is accepted for entry into Switzerland. I looked it up directly. It's there with a whole lot of other vaccines. So his excuse for wanting to get a fourth shot is just nonsense. He's making stuff up. Maybe he's planning to go somewhere else on his trip. I don't know. But he doesn't need it to get into Switzerland. And the whole idea that too many antibody is not good except for those who like me have to go abroad why does going abroad have to do with having antibodies in your system it's just another excuse because he wants to be double vaccinated with astrazeneca and that's basically it probably because you know sinovac isn't really accepted throughout the world even though it is world health organization approved so he wants to have two full vaccines of astrazeneca so he'll have less hassle though he may find that a lot of countries don't accept high astrazeneca either now i will note that like the likes of uk germany and france they do but i'm not don't think switzerland actually do a lot of countries don't so he maybe should have got some pfizer before he went so he has time to get two more pfizer shots and go to five vaccinations that would you know keep him going but the other thing he says you you know you can register to get an mrna vaccine where does he mean like pay for it yourself or how because i don't know how you can register to get mrna vaccines here at the moment the pfizer is being used for teenagers and occasionally as booster shots but it's look at the draw when you go for a booster shot what you will get here so i don't know what he's talking about but it seems like he's making sure he's well taken care of any as we would expect from any government minister and next up, foreign tourists return to Vietnam. The first international tourists have touched down in Vietnam almost 20 months after the country closed its borders to contain the coronavirus. Two charter flights brought more than 400 South Korean and Japanese fully vaccinated passengers from Seoul and Tokyo on Thursday to the southern resort city of Nha Trang, state media reported. The area is popular with golfers, beach lovers and scuba divers and boasts luxury hotels. The flights came ahead of Vietnam's plan to reopen the resort island of Phu Quoc to vaccinated foreign tourists on November 20 with hopes to welcome at least 5,000 travelers in coming months. Foreign tourists seeking to enter Vietnam must show COVID-19 vaccination certificates and a negative pre-departure coronavirus test result. The country is desperate to revive its badly hit economy after months of lockdowns. Its borders have been shut to international tourists since March last year and there are almost no commercial flights entering the country. Vietnam was widely praised for its handling of the pandemic last year with only a dozens of known coronavirus cases but from April the highly transmitted Delta variant took hold. Vietnam has since clocked more than a million infections and almost 23,000 deaths as it scrambles to secure enough vaccines for its 100 million people. So far only 32% of the population has been fully vaccinated. Now I'm not very sure about the entry requirements for Vietnam but it does say fully vaccinated and you must have a PCR test before you leave. Now it doesn't say anything about arriving and whether or not you would have to have a test. But but if he didn't, they'd be ahead of the game of Thailand already. So we'll see how this one turns out. I'm going to research a bit more about the entry requirements to get into Vietnam. We might do a segment on that during the week. And finally, some other news headlines along with the Phuket News. Protesters submit statement opposing absolute monarchy to German embassy. A large group of protesters on Sunday marched from Bangkok's Patumwan intersection to the German embassy to submit a statement opposing absolute monarchy. Cambodia to end quarantine for vaccinated travelers from November 15th. Cambodia will stop requiring quarantine for travelers who have been fully vaccinated for COVID-19 starting on Monday, according to the Prime Minister of Cambodia. 
Search for man who jumped from bridge continues. Rescue workers and local fishermen today continue their search for the man who jumped off the bridge leading onto Phuket and into the water below yesterday. Governor to present Phuket Health Smart City Plan to Cabinet. Phuket's Governor Narong Won Si has announced that he will present two main projects under the Phuket Health Smart City Plan at the Mobile Cabinet Meeting to be held in Krabi next week. And finally, MRTA moves forward with Phuket Light Rail. The Mass Rapid Transportation Authority kept the Phuket Mass Transit System project moving forward with a public meeting held in Phuket Town yesterday to gain feedback from local residents about the project. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.